In this video, we'll be making sure our IMU is mounted properly and is behaving as expected for Dreamflight VTOL. It is important to mount the IMU to the aircraft in the correct orientation and in such a way to reduce vibration. The IMU should be mounted in this direction facing the nose of the aircraft, with the exposed circuitry of the board facing up. Make sure you place the IMU as close to the aircraft's center of mass as possible, as this is the location that the aircraft will rotate about. The X axis printed on the IMU should point to the nose and the Y axis to the left side. This leaves the Z axis pointing up, which is the axis convention used for Dreamflight VTOL. I use and recommend a thick double-sided foam tape to attach the IMU to the vehicle. Two or three layers of this tape gives good vibration isolation. Another option is to hot glue a small piece of soft foam to the IMU, then glue that to the aircraft. Any method that rigidly attaches the IMU to the aircraft while still maintaining a soft connection between the two will suffice. Another good practice is to pin down the loose IMU wires with some tape so that they cannot vibrate or pull on the IMU. The benefit of having the IMU separate from the Teensy microcontroller is that the rest of the electronics can be placed elsewhere on the vehicle where it may be more convenient to access them. Now let's move over to the Dreamflight code to prepare it to use with our IMU. First, head to the user specified define section of the code and uncomment only your IMU type. The default is the MPU6050 which we are using here. The accelerometer and gyro sensitivity ranges are set to default values that give the finest resolution, but more aggressive flying aircraft may need higher values. Next, scroll down to the void loop section of the code and uncomment only the print gyro data function. Plug in the TeenZ to the computer and upload the code. Make sure the IMU is as close to level as possible. The LED on the TeenZ will turn on, indicating the IMU is calibrating and should not be disturbed. Do not touch the IMU until three quick blinks indicate that the flight controller is in the main flight control loop. Now you can open the serial monitor and verify that all three axes of the IMU's gyro are properly zeroed. They may be off by one to two degrees per second, but that is okay. Rotate the IMU about the X, then Y, then Z axis to verify your movement corresponds to the data on screen. Next, comment out the print gyro data function and uncomment the print Excel data function. Follow the same procedure as for the gyro data, this time ensuring the X and Y axes are zeroed and the Z axis reads 1G. If using the MPU 9250 9 degree of freedom IMU, there are some additional steps required to calibrate the magnetometer, which can be found in the official Dreamflight VTOL documentation. The last thing we need to do is check that the attitude estimation is giving good data for roll, pitch, and yaw angles. Uncomment the print roll, pitch, yaw function and upload the code to the board, making sure it's as close to level as possible. Open the serial monitor and verify that all readings are roughly zero when the IMU is level, and then rotate the IMU around to check that the measured angles in degrees match your movement. The yaw angle estimate will slowly drift, but that is okay because this value is never used for control on the code. Recomment out the print roll pitch yaw function to finish up. You have just completed the setup of the IMU, which is now ready for flight. If you encounter a problem during any of these procedures, you may first want to check continuity between the IMU and Teensy board with a multimeter. A bad connection between the two will give bad data or no data at all. If this does not fix the issue, the IMU itself may be faulty, in which case you will need to replace it with a new one. If you have any other issues getting set up with Dreamflight VTOL, an RC Group support thread linked in the description is available to ask questions and help troubleshoot. Good luck.